What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. Shout out to my joiners. Shout out to the Point of View crew. So, today we're going to do this video, sales and dorms. Almost kind of like, sales, duh. What kind of question is that? I can't think of anyone who would say, dorm is better. Not any situation. Maybe the video should be called, what, why are sales better than dorms? Yeah, I like that better. Let's do that. Here's why sales are better than dorms. I'll tell you. Just privacy. That right, privacy factor. And I got some stories. I'm going to kick them off. The order of the stories is very important. I got carried away when I was making this video and had too many stories. I had to take some away. The order got messed up. So I'm just going to, damn, blame me. The order's wrong. I'll say this, though. Dorms ain't bad, but I do not like the dorms you go in and the bunks are three men deep. A three-man rack dorm? What? I don't mind having one bunkie, but two bunkies, three is always a crowd, and there's awkward when you have to fit three people in there, and just the bottom person gets in all weird, the top person is just, no, they're not comfortable. Nothing about prison is built for comfort. I do get that, but especially these. And one time I show up at a pen, and I'm getting ready to use the phone, and I'm at one of these dorms with three mans to a rack, and the dude was on the phone for me. I'm waiting to use it. And he said straight, 30-man dorm, I heard him say. And I didn't hear him, but he's on the phone. 30-man dorm. And I wanted to correct him because actually, like I said, to hear him, I was reading his lips. And so I wanted to walk up and say, bro, do you say 30-man dorm or dirty sandstorm? Because there's straight up 90 motherfuckers in here and the news said slight winds. So I don't know where you get off 30-man dorm. There is 30 bunks. Three people to a bunk, though. And which you see how crowded this motherfucker is when it fills up. 90 people in it. A lot of extras. I have a feeling when they designed that prison, it was supposed to be just two people per bunk, 60 people in that space. They up at the 90. They don't care. They're not in their nuts to butts. Be that as a main. Also, trip on this. I'm on one of those three rack things again. I'm on the very bottom. I had just gotten busted, man. It sucked because I had gotten in a fight on the streets. I got hit, which I didn't feel at all. I didn't feel it. But I stepped in a gopher hole. Which caused me to fall down and then my head hit a, the wall of the house. And it left me like a big, like a raspberry, like a play little thing. The worst part about the head was bad, bad yes. But the worst part about it was no one believed me about the gopher hole. Like, damn, Splinter, you got hit and like took that fall. And I was like, no, I stepped in that gopher hole. I was like, what gopher hole? I was like, yeah, dude. See that fucking big ass gopher hole? Or it could have been like a divot from golfing. Snake hole is a hole. Someone, maybe someone, I don't know. Stepped in something, bro. The hit, had, the hit meant nothing to me. So I get busted. I got this big old thing on my head. And a homeboy offers me a beanie when I get there. He's like, hey, take this beanie, brother. It's some of the commissary, the orange beanies. I was like, cool. I think he wanted me to cover up the eyesore of my forehead. But really, I was in, only interested in using it at nighttime because the lights are so bright. It's crazy. They'll say lights out and they turn something off. It gets a little bit dimmer. Definitely lights are not out. Don't think lights are going to be out, and lights out because they're not so bright as daylight. Not for me, though, because I got this beanie I'm going to use, and I'm on the very, very bottom rack. It's kind of like tough getting in there. So that night, first night there, and I'm dope sick, of course, I slide on my bottom, and I see my beanie on the floor. I'm like, damn, I have my beanie on the floor, man. Shit. So I put it on, and I sleep all night, and I wake up in the morning, and not one, but both of my bunkies are going crazy looking for one of their beanies. I'm like, wait a minute, one of you guys lost a beanie and both of you guys are going this crazy looking for it? I was like, well, who lost a beanie? Both of you guys can't be in labor. Whose baby is it? Because both of you guys are flipping me out. Chill out, Kate. back. We gotta buy his beanie. I'm like, I don't know, I, I only have this one. The homie gave me this on my head. And then I was thinking that I got off the ground that I didn't think it was this nice. And I looked and no, mine was under the bed right where I put it, under my mattress. I had thought it had fallen on the ground. But no, that must have been his had fallen. So anyway, I was like, dude, I was like, here. I took it off and I gave it to him. I was like, you could have it. He's like, oh, you, your head, your forehead. He's like, man, and you've been wearing this? I was like, so, and? He's like, oh, there's blood on it. I was like, yeah, there's blood on it on the inside. They're never going to be able to see it on the outside. He was making a big deal out of it. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, tranquilo. The blood is not going to bite you. The blood's not going to hurt you. You think you have problems? Try, try having... A messed up ankle from a gopher hole no one wants to admit exist. So you're mad that your beanie has a little mark in it. How about if your head had a mark on it like this? 
And you're getting out in seven days. Shame on you. I'm going to the Pinta. What do you want me to tell your big homie when I get there? Scare of a little bit of blood? Huh? Yeah. Mm, that's what I thought. He was making a big ass deal out of it. And I'm dope sick. And I'm thinking, I hate these fucking dorms. I hate these fucking triple man bunks. Be that as it may. Bro. I'm in the pen. And this dude gives me, I'm at CMC West. Dorms. Not triple dorms. I mean, not triple racks. The double. Thank goodness. Someone gives me a picture. It is a Playboy from like late 80s, early 90s. I can't really get that good of a look at it. I can tell it's well done. I can tell I like it. It's mainly just butt crack. Nothing too crazy. No, it's a soft porn. Nothing, nothing too crazy. This, what's crazy is this fucking chair. How many wheels are on this thing? I, I wanted to look at it but couldn't because I'm in this dorm. I thought about just breaking it out, you know, because everyone's around in front of the homeboys and everybody going, look, oh, and be like, oh, close badass. And I, people would ask me to borrow and all kinds of stuff. I was like, I didn't want to break. I just want to look at it myself. So I had it and I just want to look at it, but I couldn't. Just every once in a while, like this. So I came up with an idea. I'm like, I know what I can do. I mean, I've been down a year with nothing but a bunch of swinging nuts and hairy legs. And now I get a picture of this nice tush. And I, I want to get a chance to enjoy it, man. Does that make me a bad guy? I don't think so. So, but what I'm going to do is, at night, 10 o'clock, let's say, they turn the lights off for the dorm, and, and the shower's closed at that point. Day room closed. No, no, day room's not closed. There's no day room. I believe the tea room might be closed. Tea rooms come off. TVs. No, 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 no. I'm getting all flazzled thinking about that picture. TVs come off, but I believe the TV rooms are still open, but the lights are off. The shower's definitely closed. Most people are in bed. This is my opportunity. I'm creeping. I'm not a creep, but I'm definitely creeping. I got my picture. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the damn shower, even though they're closed, and I'm going to enjoy my, and I'm going to enjoy the opportunity to like be able to move around, exercise some freedom of movement, and I'm going to be able to enjoy looking at my picture. In fact, I'm going to tape it to the wall and take myself a shower after lights out. How gangster is that? Huh? Some people might call it gangster. Some people might. Anyway, be that as it may. That's what I did when they taped the picture, took myself a shower. Fully expected to get hemmed up or in trouble when I got out. Someone's confronting me by saying, hey, the shower's turned off. What are you doing now? Post game lights off. Because the cop's office is right here. As soon as you come out of the shower, there he is. I, so I just took my time in there, lathered up, took my shower. When I got done, I walked out. No one said anything. Couldn't believe it. A lot of people out, no one. Cop just saying no one said nothing? No one? Damn. Okay. So what do you think I did? Back in there the next night. Why wouldn't I? In fact, you know how time gets away from you before I know it. Fuck, I think it's like a daily thing for like a week. Seven, eight, ten days I've been going there every night. Enjoying the ability to be able to move around. Why wouldn't I? So this is my little time to shine. It's my little nighttime private time. I was loving it. This is great. So one night I'm coming out like I have been for every night for the last seven or eight nights. And this motherfucker gets in right after me. I was like, what? I mean, I felt violated. I mean, I felt like, I almost felt like he was talking to my lady or something. Like, dude, this is closed. What are you fucking doing, bro? You getting in there, someone going to say something? Does this guy just went in there way, clear, way after hours? I waited for him to get out. And he came in, I was like, bro, what, what are you doing? I was like, what'd you, what'd you, where'd you touch her at anyway? Did you just touch her just on the, like the water? You didn't touch this up here, did you? The, the drain, did you clog it? You didn't clog her up. What? I can't believe her. He's like, man, I didn't. I said, no, you didn't, did you? And I don't want you to ditton again. Ever again. Fuck that. Get away from there. And the next night, when you know it, before I even got a chance to go in, someone beat me to it. See, he spoiled it. Just when I was doing it, no one was going to say nothing and questioning it. And then one guy does it, then everyone thinks they could do it. And fucking ruined my whole thing. Now I was back to looking at the butt crack like. But I have burned it in my mind, if that counts for anything. So, he does it, man. So, sales, better. Much better. Harm sit better. I never really have got to tell this story that I'm going to tell right now. I've alluded to it a couple of times, but it's a cell situation I had at Corcoran. Let me just say, though, the night before I went to Corcoran, Turtle and I from Ontario is my dog. He's my celly all summer long. We went over to AR together. We were on T-Bones, different side of the day room. Didn't stop us from hanging out, going to different side of the day rooms, kicking it when we weren't supposed to. Who gives a fizz up? We caught a battery together. We're dogs, man. I catch that bag to go to Corcoran. Turtle and I have a spread. The beans and chips, soups, all that. Some meat. But he's cutting up the meat with my ID card. My ID card breaks. And he's like, bro, are you thinking what I'm thinking? 
I go, probably not, because you look like you shit your pants, and I'm cool, calm, and collect. So I'd say, no, we're probably thinking two totally different things. He's like, dude, your, your ID card broke. I was like, yeah? He's like, it's a premonition. Like, when you go to Cork and your face get broken in half, and boy, cut or stab or just face can get fucked up. I was like, damn, is that what that means? I was like, well, there was a, a weak spot in my ID card, though. He said, when's the last time you've seen a doctor? I was like, so there could be a weak spot in my face. He goes, I go, fuck, imagine that. So I went to Cork with that on my mind. Get there. I'm on fish row. And look, I'm hip. I already know the game. Right when I get there, I see my good friend Tom. Who I, he was my selling D1 back in the day. I was with him in D4. I know his stories from SUVs. My, my homie, Tom. I know him so good, I was supposed to get out and ride him. I never did. He's that kind of friend. Got gang of love for him. There's Tom. Oh, what's up, boy? What are you doing, dog? I had a homie, Southsider Capone, from Bakersfield in the corner. This dude, Stretch, from Fresno. I met in Building 3 and I was on Fish Row. I really liked. He's a lifer. Married and divorced three times. I'm like, dude, let's have a talk. Put me up on game because, I mean, I can't get a chick to stay loyal to me for six months. I get busted and she's not there when I get out. And you, a lifer, you got some chick waiting for you to come home? And you're not coming home? Damn, put me up on game, brother. What are you saying to these girls? That you, I don't know. Be that as a man. I was comfortable in building three. I'm on fish row. Hope I'm not going too fast. When you get to Corcoran like I did, boom. I'm in building three. They're going to put you on fish row for 10 days. You don't leave the cell. You stay there. It's orientation. But I already know that when I leave orientation, they're going to want to put me, kick me out to the yard in a cell somewhere. So I already know I'm not going to wait for the cops to give me a, a ducat. Say, here, you're going to go to this cell, this bed. I already know that since I'm going to come off Fish Road to go get my own cell, start looking around who has an empty cell and move, find out who where I want to go, take destiny and fate in my own hands. Who do I want to move in with? And I'm looking and asking around. Sure enough, Smiley from Orange County. Right across from the cell I'm currently in on Fish Row, right above Tom, right down this way from the South Sider from Beggarsfield, right Caddy Corner from... Dude, stretch from Fresno, Smiley from Orange County, needs a celly. Boom, I'm in, homeboy. I'm coming off Fish Row. I'm moving in with you. It's all set up. It's good. Boom, can't wait. As soon as I come off Fish Row, I'm going right in. We got the cops, did the bed move. Hey, Tom, what's up, dog? Can't wait to see you. We're going to work out. But wait a minute. What I didn't know was there's only two available cells in all the prison. In all the prison. In the whole fucking prison, only two cells. On that yard, there's only two white cells possibility for me to go into. That one was Smiling and with Bobby from Orange County in Building 5. Only two white cells. So I'm going to go in one of them and my Sally Eddie from Odell is going to go in the other. One of us is going to go with Bobby. One of us will go with Smiley. I didn't know that. I didn't know the only open cell was with Bobby. And since by default, since I'm going with Smiley, that means Eddie has to go with Bobby. But Bobby came up to me not knowing... That I put the bed move, that I already finagled everything, that I'm already, I took care of my own destiny, my fate. I already got my bed waiting for me. I'm moving in with Smiley. Bobby didn't know that. He came at me. He's like, hey, bro, you want to move in with me when you come off fish row? I was like, hey, no offense, dog, but um, I'm already moving with Smiley. I already talked to him. I'm, I'm good friends with Tom. I'm at the South Sider homie right there. I'm getting kind of attached to Stretch right there, that crazy motherfucker. But no, I'm good. I already got my, he's like, oh, okay, no problem. Cool, I'll, I'll, I'll get homeboy. But it was a problem. It was a big problem. I just didn't know it was a problem because he didn't really have a way of showing me. Because currently he had a job where he was, I only went to day, day yard. I didn't go to night yard. He went to, he didn't go to day yard because he had a job. So I didn't even see this dude. So my last conversation with him was, oh, okay, cool, no problem. Until he got the keys to the yard. Because the dude, Billy, who had the keys to the yard, got in trouble. Some small bullshit. I think the cops wanted him, blah, blah, blah. Snatch him up, throw him in the hole. But it's like a funky little charge. It's not going to stick long. He's going to be gone like 30 days or so. So while he's gone off the yard as a replacement until he gets back, they put up that dude Bobby from Orange County, the dude who wanted me to be a celly. Now he has the keys to the yard. Now he's at day yard. Did I say day room earlier? I just mean daytime yard. I never. I, I only went to daytime yard. That dude Bobby never went to daytime yard because of his fucking job. He doesn't have the job no more. He has the keys to the yard. Boom, he's a daytime yard. We lock eyes. What's up, boo? Hey, what are you doing? I ain't seen you for a minute. Last conversation we had, he's like, everything's cool. Anyway, he goes and does himself some pull-ups. He's like... He 
He's doing them all, dude. He's like, fuck, homeboy. Damn, can you teach teach me some of this? Like, your bad fucking ass to pull up some way. I was like, gonna congratulate him on his pull up. He jumps down. He's like, some people just do it, don't do what they say, do they? And everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And even I was like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, right, Splinter? And I was like, huh? What? He's like, yeah. He's like, you're supposed to move in my cell. What happened, dog? And I try to do the Jedi mind trick. Answer the question with a question. I was just like, what cell? What cell? It's like, my cell. You're supposed to move in my cell. What do you mean, what cell? And I was like, oh. He's like, and I was like, oh, well, actually. He's like, no, I don't want to talk about it. And I was like, after I like gathered my composure a little bit, because first I was like blown away off his pull up routine. And then when he said like, people don't do what they say, right splinter in front of everybody, I was like, oh. it took me a minute to like gain my composure. And I was like, well, wait a minute now. And he goes, no, drop it. I don't want to talk about it. And I was like, but hang on. He goes, no, drop it. And I was like, fuck, dude. And he just walked away and it got real fucking awkward between him and I. Real weird. For a while, every time I saw him after that, he would just look at the ground and shake his head. I want to look at you while I'm doing that, but it's not you, it's me. He'd always just do this. Which is like, Disrespectful-ish. I'm not going to take too much of that motherfucker. But now it came down to... I had like two weeks left in the house. And I'm thinking, I don't want to fight this dude, man. And he's acting like he wants to fight me. I don't want to fight him. Two weeks of the pad. I mean, look, I'm going to lose 45 days. Six weeks. So you know how... What, what two weeks plus six weeks is? It's 595,000 weeks. Is what it felt like. Two weeks of the pad... To fuck around and fight some knack over his ego and lose six weeks? It felt like I had to do an extra 5,955,000 weeks. I ain't trying to do it, dude. I don't want that extra six weeks, 45 days. Fuck that. I just want this dude to leave me alone. Every time I see him, he's in my fuck, man. And then he would start up with the... Ch There's people, man. There's people. Stuff like that. And I know I'm the people. I'm the people, right? I'm the people. And everyone else that I know is I'm the people. When he says, just some people these days. And shit like that's a building. I'm like, I'm gonna end up fighting this dude like three days at the fucking house and have three days plus 45 is gonna be 950. Fuck, man. It was getting tense between us. Till finally, they brought the dude back. Billy, who had the keys to the building. Boom. Threw him on Fish Row. And three block where I'm at. So I, I come back from r and &R. I'm getting ready to go home. Like, it's in a couple of days. I, I got my, my dress out in. I had a sign for him. Yard's closed. I come back. That dude, Bobby... Has the keys to the yard. He's allowed to roam around. He's a, he's hanging out in front of my block, three block, all stressed out. He wants to get a kite to that dude Billy. He just came back from the hole because everyone's been telling him Billy that Bobby's been talking shit about him. Like, yeah, I can run the yard better. When he comes back, I'm gonna keep the yard. Just talking all kinds of shit about him. So he sees me and he has a kite ready to give him. He can't wait to give it to him. He's stressed out. He wants to give it to him for everyone else does. He sees me, Splinter. So what's up, bro, dude? Can you give this kite? Take it in there, Billy's Billy and I go. Yeah, he's there. We take this kite to go. Not. No, but fuck no. I'm allergic to that kite. That kite has fucking AIDS as far as I'm concerned. <sighs> Get away from me. I, I wouldn't piss on that kite if it was on fire. Please do me this cell and take it in there. Never that. And I say, dude, and you know, fucking I never agreed to be your celly. I had my own. He goes, I know, dog. He's like, I just didn't want to have to fucking pick up hair. Because I didn't know if I added this yet or not. But homeboy Eddie had long hair. And that was the thing. I just wanted to pick up the hair. I said, well, did you? He goes, yeah, every day. I said, well, good. Fuck you in the neck. I ended up prolling. Everything was good. Oh, no, it was good for you. It was good for me. Running out of time. It's gonna, I think the video might die soon. Let me just try to crack this off. No, no, we got time. I smogged my car. So happy. I've been driving on expired tags. California, you got a year in the corner and you got the month. When the month t pops up, you got to change it. My month popped up in August. What are we at? March now? I've had cops behind me. Never get pulled over. No one was sweating me. Funny how when I was scouting a parole, I was running from the cops. I couldn't get away with nothing. Never be allowed to drive around with spired tags back then. I remember one time I'm just walking down the street. A cop comes towards me, driving down the street. I like cover my face and duck down an alley to show myself from him. In case he sees all his tattoos when he sweats me, I'm a wanted man. Someone flagged the cop down, some nosy pedestrian or whatever, and said, Hey, this dude ducked down an alley from me. And he came, sh snatched me up. And now here to check me out, driving around with expired tags. But... I got, I got the tags. I would go smog it though. You know my driver's side door don't open? I pulled up the smog it all happy. Finally get to take my car. The smog tech's like, hey, driver's side door don't open? I go, no. He goes, well, hey, I need the door open to smog the car. I go, fuck you do, don't you? Damn. Came home, tried for an hour to get that the door open. Couldn't do it. Couldn't get the panel off. A YouTube tutorial on how to open a door. They got them. You know what the door looks like? Open already. The YouTube tutorial on how to open a stuck door shows you how to get the door open with open already. You know why they do that? Because there's screws at the bottom that they want to get to. But hey, homeboy, show me how to do it with the door shut. 
okay? Because that's how mine is, but my screws aren't from the bottom. They're actually inward like that. So anyways, I'm fucking with it, and I call my moderator, Derek. He's with the business. He's all that in a big bucket of boats. Love that dude's life. Derek, what am I going to do? He said, take it to another smog shop, dude. They'll smog through the window. So I call around the next smog shop. Sure enough, come through with smog through the damn window. They did. Awesome sauce. So I'm all smogged up. I'm ready to go. I'm good. I'm feeling good. One more quick little story about a three-man bunk. I'm at three-man bunk. I'm on the top rack. I hear hardcore snoring. It's driving me crazy. It's keeping me up. I'm already kicking. I'm miserable. I'm hearing this hardcore snoring. I don't know who it's coming from. My middle bunkie or the dude at the very bottom. Finally, I get up and decide to do something about it. Wake him up or do something. And when I jump down to like look at him, but I can't be super obvious. I notice I can't see the dude in the very, very bottom, but I know the dude in the middle is on his back. And it's like, it's him. I know it is because from my experience, it seems like people, like I've had girlfriends and stuff, when they're on their back, they snore. And I have to be like, get off your back. It seems like when you're on your back, more prone to snoring. I saw him. He's like, there he is. There's the perpetrator. Pardon me. I, I grabbed his blanket. I wanted to pull his blanket a little bit, but I pulled it all the way off by accident. I didn't, didn't mean to. And the blanket's on the floor. I get back up on my rack and I lay there. And like a minute later, I hear him say, like, wake up kind of groggy, like, where's my blanket? He says to himself, I'm like, then I hear him say, oh, it's on the floor. Fuck. And he gets down, gets his blanket, and then I hear him say, fuck, I barely fell asleep. I can't sleep because that motherfucker snoring. And then I hear <laughs> a big old snore. He's like, damn, I got the wrong dude. And this guy in the bottom. And I woke up the poor middle guy by yanking his blanket off. He can't sleep like me. Finally got a little five-minute power nap, and I woke his ass up. Be that as a main. It was good for you. It was good for me. Hit me up on Instagram, trenchlife underscore 10. I said a badass song. If you don't believe me, go check it out. I, I, wanna, I was thinking about getting put on YouTube. A badass guitar rhythm. Homeboy, Little Bird Beat, gave me the beat for it. The thing that fucked up is I had some cool lyrics for it. Some cool lyrics for it. And I could not get the lyrics out. They would not fit the rhythm. And so I just started saying, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. That's what the lyrics end up being is I don't give a fuck. But it's badass guitar work. And I'm mad at myself that I did so much cussing over. I should have said no lyrics. But what's the point of saying all that? The point of was, I don't even know what the whole point of that was. Oh, hit me up on Instagram. Translife underscore 1010. Motherfucking, you can write me at my post office box. PO box 21633. Bakersfield, California 93390. You could... I'm mean, what else, man? We can do it all. Hang out, collaborate, correspond. You tell me. That's about it. That's about all I got. I'm going to go live soon. Next couple of days. Probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow morning. I'll put on everything. I'm going live tomorrow morning. Put on everything. Watch. Hold me to it. Cop yourself a shirt. Cut the string. Let it fly. Peace.